And generally speaking, the closer that you get to the palace or to the court, the bigger the false prophet you're going to tend to be. The allure of wealth and power and influence are almost always corrupting. In my mind then, whether or not the false prophet represented in Revelation is the church, it doesn't really matter. The church or institutionalized religion has frequently been portrayed throughout the Bible as false prophets and court prophets. The wilderness prophets are usually the ones with little power, they're shabbily dressed, they're persecuted, they say really weird and countercultural things, and they eat food cooked over dung and do other weird stuff. But what does this whole court prophet and wilderness prophet thing have to do with our series on propaganda? It has a lot to do with it, I think. Government is a bitter poison that nobody can stand the taste of. Taxation, conscription, persecution, violence, corruption, you name it, government is nasty. But using pure violence doesn't tend to fare too well for rulers, which is why, as David Graeber pointed out in um, our first episode that we talked about, many people and institutions seek to implement the less coercive and abrasive forms of power by controlling information and using charisma. Certainly, politicians do this kind of thing, but throughout time, politicians have recognized that the church is a wonderful vehicle to co-opt into their service. They've been doing it all the way since the Old Testament times with the court prophets. Religion is the spoonful of sugar that makes the poison of government go down. It's a primary delivery system, not just for the government, but for a lot of things, really. So wherever it is that you find propaganda, you're bound to find the church not only not lagging too far behind, but often at the forefront. 